As a Christian, we always want to align ourselves with the path God has set down for us. But at times we just don't know how. That is why here on Divine Path, we'll be teaching Christians how to navigate the world today. You're welcome to Divine Path. My name is Lilian Ogazi, and on today's episode, we have a special guest and he will be teaching us about faith and how to apply that special tool that God has gave you. Do stay, we'll be right back. You're welcome back from that quick break. This is Divine Path coming to you from Trust TV and my name once again is Lilian Ogazi. Now before we went on a break, I told you we had someone special and we're talking about something that affects you and I. Now with me to throw more details into that special topic we have today is Pastor Joe Ada, the resident pastor of Savannah Grace Chapel. You're welcome, sir. Thank you so much, Lillian. Thank you very much for joining me here today. My pleasure now, I, to be here. I, I told my listeners that um, we're talking about faith. Now faith is um, something that, yeah, we all say, I have faith and I believe in God. I have faith. I put my faith to this. I put my faith to that. I believe this is going to happen. But we experience struggles at um, one point in time. But before we go into all of that now, what exactly is faith? This word we use a lot. What exactly does it mean? Thank you, Lillian. I'm glad to be here and um, I'm always glad to talk about faith. Um, but we must first of all understand that in this context, when we talk about faith, we should look at the Bible because that's where we have our base from, that's where we have our foundation from, and that's final authority when it comes to any understanding or any topic that we'll be talking about in the body of Christ. So we should let the Bible define faith. Okay. And Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 say, Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, King James, I just quoted it in the King James Version, but if we look at it in other translations, that may shed more light on what faith is for us. So I quickly want to just look at, um, read it to us from the Bible. And... Um, so if you have your Bible um, there, wherever you are, would you please just turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Um, I read it in the King James, or I quoted it in the King James. I'm going to read it from the Amplified Version of the Bible that says, And now faith is the assurance, the firm, the, the confirmation, excuse me, the title deed of things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real facts what is not revealed to the senses. So, here we clearly see that faith is me taking hold of what is in the realm of the unseen and bringing it into the realm of reality. It's the assurance, it's the confidence I have that what God has said to me in His Word is true. And it's, it's true concerning my own life. Now, we, we, are, we, are, we ought to understand that faith is what God, is God's tool to us, is what He uses, and it's His tool to us to use. Um, and I want to just read on in the same uh, Hebrews 11, but I'll continue reading that in the King James Version of the Bible. It says, in verse 2, it says, For by it the elders obtained a good report. And the first elder is talked about in verse 3. It says, through faith, we understand that the worlds, the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear, right? So we can clearly see that faith is a tool that God himself used and is based on his word. He said the worlds were framed by the word of God. So it is by faith that God created the world. It is by faith he created you and I. And he has given us the same tool to use as Christians. Why? Because we are born of him, right? And if, uh, like um, John chapter 3 says, he said, what is born of the spirit is spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. And what is born of the spirit is spirit. Now, if you are born of God, if you are born of a man, of a woman, like both of, both of us are, that means we are human beings. And we have every attribute of a human being. We have the uh, abilities of a human being. We have the characteristics of a human being. So what would you think about uh, anything, any being that is born of a dog will definitely have the characteristics of a dog. dog. So anything that is born of God should definitely have the characteristics of God and should have the tools and the abilities of God. So given to us is faith from God for us to use just the same way he's using. Now what, I, what people miss when you say something like that is they begin to think, 
oh, if I have the ability of God, faith, and I can exercise my faith in God's word, then I should just go ahead and believe God for a plane tomorrow, and I have an aircraft tomorrow. Now, I'll, I'll also to get to that now. now okay. Uh, Permit, per, permit me to just jump ahead a little bit, okay. but you need to know that if you have abilities, if you have a tool, there is a process of learning to use that tool, right? Um, and you cannot just jump up and take a one-year-old baby and expect the baby to use his muscle to lift what oh, a grown-up man really. like myself would do, right? So what am I saying? We have faith. We need to build our faith. We need to develop our faith. And in that process, we'll be able to do more as we grow in our knowledge of faith and in our use of faith. Okay, before we get to, I love the fact that you've already mentioned we need to build our faith. Now, yeah. that's a question on its own. Okay. But before we get to, how do we apply this faith? Because you said it's a tool that God has given to us. So how do we make use of this tool in our everyday activities? Now, that's... that's um, a question that will lead me to say a lot of things. Right? <laughs> okay. Uh, so first of all, I would like to read to us. Um, like I said when, when I started, I want the Bible to be the one to answer the questions, right? It's not just my opinion now, it's what the Word of God has to say. And the Word of God is final authority. The Bible said this is the pillar and the ground of truth as the church. And what is the truth that we have? The Word of God. Um, and not just, you know, Bible, like, like every word in the Bible. We need to look at it like what really is the answer from scripture which is the gospel and that's what i want to drive up the gospel what is the gospel the gospel is jesus's death burial yes. and resurrection right and our faith ought to be in that for our faith to work it must be in the sacrifice of jesus right and so i'll just take us quickly to um john first john chapter five and i'll read from verse one it says whosoever what does it mean to say whosoever Who's included in whosoever? All of us. All of us. Yes. Everyone is part of whosoever. So whosoever believes that Jesus is, is the Christ is born of God. Making it clear that do you believe that Jesus is the Christ? Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you? Do you believe that he rose for your justification? Have you accepted him into your heart as your Lord and Savior? Then you are born of God. It means you have the nature of God. And everyone that, that loveth him that be God, that be God, loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Now verse 4 is where I was getting to. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So what God has given to us to subdue, to dominate, to overcome the circumstances in life, to overcome the issues that will come up in life is our faith. So how, how do, you do you use this tool is, oh. the, is a question. Um, I'll take you again to scriptures. Mark chapter 11. This time I read from 20, 22. And Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Um, there are um, references and other translations that actually put it, have the faith of God. Okay. So we need to understand that there is, there is natural human faith, right? Like you are sitting in that chair. It's a common example that is used a lot. You have faith in the chair that you can hold your weight. That will fall. That's, that you will not fall. <laughs> That's why you came confidently and sat in the chair. You're still sitting there and not jittery in any way that you're going to fall because you have the natural human faith that this is going to hold you. But faith that we're talking about, have the faith of God, the faith that moves mountains, like you will hear me read shortly, is the faith of God, right? And is the faith that God has given to us. Like I talked about, we are born of God, so we have his faith. Um, and scripture says in Romans chapter 12, that God has dealt to everyone the measure of faith. And that's to every believer. Because another scripture says, not all men have faith. Mm -hmm. so, so it's not just everyone. Yeah. It's people who are his children, people who are born of him they have his faith and can exercise his faith and how do you exercise it jesus made it clear here in his own words he said have the faith have faith in god or have the faith of god verse 23 say for verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he say shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he said so how do you Release faith, or how do you exercise your faith? It is by believing in your heart and saying with your mouth. Words 
hold a very key and important uh, place in exercising our faith. Why would why should we just put it that way? Scriptures, but beyond um, in explaining the scriptures, I would say this: that if you have, if you are a king or in authority in any way, maybe even a governor, how do you exercise your authority as a governor of the state? Well, you have to speak. To you them. have to give, give instructions. Order, give you instructions. have to give orders. And if we put in the, in the settings of a king whose word is final authority, um, which would look would uh, be similar more to what scripture is is if a king wants to uh, something to happen he'll give a decree he'll give an order he mm -hmm. will say let this be and that's it now the king is not going to wonder about if it's going to be if it's not going to be he knows that he has authority he's going to exercise his authority by speaking he's not going to get out there on the road to make sure everybody obeys him there are things forces in place right organized mm -hmm. structure that will ensure that the words of the king become final authority in the same way, God, in His mercy, in His His mercy, is His strength, is His favor, right? In all that, He has ensured that when we speak His word, believing in our heart, there is action. There is action. Okay. His own power goes into effect because it's the word that we have spoken, and it's His faith that is exercised. We will go into action to make sure that what we say come to pass. As a matter of fact, scriptures say, I watch over my word to perform it. Now, when you speak his word, he will perform his word. Okay, so when you're speaking, because it's, it takes a lot. I know growing up back then, my mom used to say the tongue is very powerful. So you should Dead watch. Dead life and the power of the tongue. Exactly, so you should watch what you say. And I grew up in a home where I don't think I ever had my mom tell me one day you were foolish or you were stupid. Oh, that's awesome. Not for a you minute. You grew up well. <laughs> yes, well... <laughs> I took the opposite. But then again, it, 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 and I held on to that a lot. She says, I can't declare negative things to my children. I can't tell my children they are stupid or they are foolish because I know there's power in my tongue. And I, that, that stuck to me a lot. And now you coming out to say it's what you speak with your mouth and believe in your heart. So how do I build so much confidence to get to that point where I believe that whatever I say with my mouth and I believe in my heart, it's going to happen? How do I build that? Okay. From where right here, you can have what you see, mm -hmm. right? And um, there's a lot of emphasis here in this verse 23 of Mark chapter 11. There's emphasis, three times emphasis on, on speaking and one on believing. Believing. But you have to understand that you have to believe in your heart and say with your mouth. I'm emphasizing that because when you said, said it just now, you said what you say and believe in your heart. But it's the other way around. It's okay. what you believe in your heart. And you say with your mouth. Okay. Where do we get that from? Romans chapter 10. Uh, and allow me to read that. Uh, Romans 10 verse 9. I'll start from verse 9. Uh, you see, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth Jesus is, uh, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So, first of all, how did we even come into this life of God? How did we become saved? By believing in our heart that Jesus died and rose for us, and by declaring with our mouth that what? Believe in your heart. Um, um, if you say, if thou shalt, excuse me, if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Uh, verse 10 says, With the heart man believe unto righteousness. What is righteousness? Right standing. I qualify. If I say I'm, I'm righteous, uh, if I say uh, I'm, according to the law of this land, I stand right. I have rights. It means I qualify here in Nigeria to own things, to be um, in like a citizen. I, I have rights, right? Like we say. If we look at it this way also, for your rights to be established, there must be a believing with the heart. And note, believe with your heart, not with your mind. Okay. Now, the heart here is the, the question you want to ask is what is the heart? Yeah, but, How but, do you but, believe with this yeah. blood pump, right? No, before we, but before let me we let get, you go. On. Before we get to all of that now, we're going to be going on a quick break. Let's, 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 there's a whole lot in my head. I hope, I hope this time is going to be enough for us. But um, if you're just joining us, this is Divine Path and Trust TV, and I'm here with Pastor okay. Joe Ada. We're talking about faith. But do not go anywhere because we're going to get back and get right back into the conversation. Do stay. You're welcome back. 
this is Divine Parts coming to you from Trust TV and once again my name is Lilian Okazi. If you're just joining us, you really have not missed out on anything because we still have a whole lot to talk about. Well, you've actually missed out though. Well, we'll catch up. We'll catch you up. So stay tuned. All right, with me now I have Pastor Joe Ada and we're talking about faith. And before we went on break, he explained to us what faith is and how to use this tool that God has given you. But then he started, he started telling me several other things that, you know, I'm sure you feel the same way too, but let's get to that. Now he said, believe with your heart, not your mind. Please, can you throw more light on that? Okay. Um, the heart, man is a spirit. Mm. He has a soul and he lives in a body. The inner man, according to um, some part of scripture, refer to him as the hidden man of the heart or the inner man or your spirit. is a real you. Okay. That is who, that's who you are. That's a person looking at me through this windows you call eyes nice. right and um, in that that is who lives because this is a house this is just a container is a tabernacle like scripture will refer to um, and is made from dust and will return to dust but the spirit of man is eternal right and he has a soul he has a mind will and emotion that comprises of his soul right um, so to believe god is to believe with your spirit and you're wondering how am i going to believe with my spirit how do you believe with your mind what makes you believe because if you talk about faith you're talking about confidence in something confidence in this chair confidence that this tree can hold you uh, this railing can hold you confidence in something so if I say believe with your heart I would simply say you have confidence in God based on his word that is spiritual because the words that I speak to you they are spirit and they are life like Jesus said the word of God has to come from your head into your heart. And how would that happen? It happens only by meditation. It happens by study and it happens by listening to God's word. Um, i give you an example. When Paul was preaching uh, in the place and um, the Bible says he saw a, a man that was crippled mm. and he said he perceived that this man had faith to be healed. Why? Because the man was listening to him. Still going back to Romans chapter 10 where we were before, where I talked about... Um, with the heart man believe unto righteousness, with, uh, with the mouth confession, confession is, made is made unto salvation. The salvation is, is uh, the manifestation of what, what you believe, of what God's words say. But if you go down in that same chapter up to verse 17, it says, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by you giving your attention, hearing and hearing. There has to be a protracted interface with the word it will build faith in your heart um, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a very long time but it has to be as long as your own spirit will take hold of this word because faith is based on the word of God for instance if I'm trusting God for health for divine health I'll find God's word that, that um, talk about healing for an example is first Peter 2 24 he himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we yeah. were healed. We were healed. Now, I'll take those words and I'll meditate on them. It is important that I meditate on them. And it's important that I do it every day. <laughs> Allow me to stick with another scripture because I, I see the look on your face. <laughs> uh, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Say, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then you make your way prosperous and you have good success. So, Success comes from meditating in God's word. Okay. That meditation makes, t helps your spirit to take hold of the reality of the truth of this word. And faith will arise in your heart. And you're going to pay attention to those words. You're going to pay attention to God's word in the area that you, you seek a, a, an answer until faith arises in your heart. One time is not enough. You may just listen to it one time and oh okay i i i, I it, it's not enough but a lot of things that you learn with your mind you don't just do it one time and you have gotten a hold of it okay. but besides that this is coming from your mind to your, to spirit. your spirit and i would say faith commit by hearing and hearing god's word so you need to pay attention to god's word the faith will come out of the word of god your confidence will arise in this word as you pay attention to it okay now i'm going to give you a personal experience please to ask this next question because you said faith comment by hearing yeah. and the first thing that came to my head was if 
doesn't mean I can build my faith without actually, or doesn't mean I can use or apply this faith without actually making reference to God's word. <laughs> that's one. Okay. Now, two. <laughs> what? Well, that, that's, that. <laughs> go ahead, please ask this. Now, two. There was a point, I know I, I had this thing in my head where I always say, it's like when you are just starting to believe in God, God shows you all the wonders. And then when you are now fully in, really in a good relationship with God, and you, I, I feel like you have to pray and pray and pray for that miracle to happen compared to when you just started. Because there was a point where there wasn't re I wasn't really a church person, I wasn't really a God person. I couldn't remember the number of times I... I couldn't remember how, as I was never there, but I got to a point in my life where I knew I needed, I really needed God, mm -hmm. and I would just occasionally pray. And things happened. My life turned around. I said, yeah, 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 is this how it is? But <laughs> now I realize I have to do more work for that that happened then. So it's bringing me to... Not more work, necessarily. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm trying to understand now. Does it mean I, I can't really apply my faith if it's not with God's word. Okay, I'll answer your question. I'll try to make it very simple. Okay. First of all, faith is based on God's word. And um, if you take God's word away, there is no faith. Where is your confidence? What are you believing? Faith is, is uh, you know, I, I meet people who would say, oh, you, you need to have faith. Have faith in what? In what? Okay. Have faith in what? Because if I tell you, you need to believe me. You What, what should I believe you for? I have to give you something. I have to say something to you, then you believe what I say. So faith is based on God's word. And then you find people who say, oh, I'm doing this, uh, I'm doing this because uh, God, God will help me do this. Did he tell you that? <laughs> did he tell you to go do that? If God did not give you his word on that, then you can't, you don't have any right to say I believe in him for that. I have very quick examples. Students, go and read for your exams <laughs> because that is the next thing they always say. God will help me. If Heaven God, helps those who help themselves. Well, help, nah, that's not scripture. <laughs> <laughs> they always say that. That is not scripture to say Heaven helps those who help themselves. Heaven helps those who have faith in the word of God, uh -huh. not those who help themselves. Well, but what I'm saying is this. Some people just, you know, take off saying that um, they are, they are, they are going to accomplish this. I'm going to, I'm going to get this. I'm going to do this. If you have faith in yourself to do it, well, that's up to you, right? And there's a measure of faith you can have in yourself. But if you're going to take advantage of the power of God that's going to get everything done for you and done for you well, rested, and not in your abilities, then you're going to trust God and you're going to base your trust in His Word. You're going to hear Him in His Word declare to you that this is what He has asked, He has, uh, is telling you. For instance, I give the example of health. It's clear in Scripture that God does not want anybody sick for one second. Okay. There is no symptom that is approved of God. Why do I say that boldly? Because Jesus paid the price. If I pay the price for you to live in a, in a house, why should you think that you still need to pay anything for it? The price is paid for us to be in divine health. What I simply need to do is find scripture that tell me that, and I base my faith on that. But there is no scripture that tells me that I should, for instance, I'm, I'm married to Rachel. There is no scripture that says, Joe, marry Rachel. Okay. No, so I have to, if I'm going to believe God to be married to Rachel, I have to hear God in a way say that to me. And it's not going to be a voice, most likely, because the primary way God leads us is by our inward witness, a perception. I have to receive that from him and have that confidence that God is leading me in that direction to approach Rachel. And I did 13 years ago and we are married, <laughs> right? But I'm, I'm just trying to show you that there are words that are clearly in scripture that we need to just look at the scripture and take God for his word and stay in those words until they become his word, they become alive in us. Like uh, Proverbs chapter 4, uh, verse 20 says, My son, attend to my words, incline your ear to my saying, let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that see them, find them. Now, how are you going to find them? By attending to it by letting them through your ear gates, by keeping your eyes on them, by meditating on the words, and you will find them. They become a revelation in your heart, and then you can boldly, I mean, that faith arises in you to take hold, right? Your other question was, um, um, you need, it, at first it seemed like God was flooding you with things, and all of a sudden it seemed like you need to do more. Yes. No, it's not like God is flooding you with things and you need to do more, but I'll put it this way, that um, you have a son, right mm -hmm. if you have a son who is 
three months old. There are things you expect from him, right? By the time he's 16, your expectations increase. Expectations increase. Okay. You expect him to take advantage. Your three months old will cry, and you say, maybe he's thirsty. You go and find water to give him, or you go and find food. Maybe he's hungry. You find food to give him, and you go through all the checks until you get what is making him <laughs> cry. And he comes down right. Or your 16 years old will not sit down there and cry, and then you now start looking for okay, try water. Okay, try food. Okay, try that. No, okay. because he's grown. And you expect him to take responsibility in a way, to take advantage of that which is already provided to him. We have a covenant with God, right? And in our covenant, healing is provided. Mm. As um, a young convert or an unbeliever who appears in a crusade, he may not have any faith in it at all, in the word of God at all concerning healing. And boom, he receives a miracle that advertises the gospel to him. Mm -hmm. Then he comes into Christ and God will allow him grow, expose him to his word, so that he can take advantage of the covenant that is his of healing and stay in divine health constantly. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. It's been very interesting, but we, this conversation has not ended because we're still going to bring more of this. Thank you very much to all of you who stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you have questions or comments or suggestions of topics you would like us to talk about, well, please do well to send it in to the social media handles just scrolling right below and we're definitely going to send responses. Pastor Joe will send his answer to you. So please send in your questions and we're definitely going to respond to them. Having said that, I have come to the end of this episode of Divine Path. Thank you so much for joining us and have a lovely evening. Mm -hmm.